Hey guys, so for the last few months, I've been working on the Cosmic Tower, which is the dashboard which parsed data from incoming sensor values of a model rocket and put them on a line chart or even displayed them just on a nice modern user interface. So today I'll just be talking about the improvements I've done and some new features I've added. So first off, the biggest thing that has happened since the last video I've made was to completely rebuild the software from scratch. And when I mean from scratch, I mean I just built a new project in Visual Studio and started from a completely different uh, programming language. And this time I chose Dart. Why Dart? Well, because it's just meant for better UI and it also allows me to maybe cross platform in the future. So during the initial release of the Cosmic Tower, it will be on Windows, but if I want to, I can also push it to Apple very easily. So the second improvement is actually a dynamic UI. You see that with the first version of the Cosmic Tower, it was completely static. And there was only one window you can work with and even that window couldn't change in size so when people were installing the application on their computer it was actually clipping out of their screen because the monitor i was developing the app on was bigger than some laptop sizes so that really surprised me and sure enough when i installed it on my laptop it was also clipping out of the screen so that's around the same time where I deactivated the download link because I knew there was a major problem and I didn't want to, you know, people to uh, lose hope on the project. So I just quickly made the link uh, unavailable anymore. And so I switched programming languages then. And sure enough, since I moved towards Flutter, it never happened again. Um, obviously, there is overflow issues but that's actually my end, but I easily fix those and it works perfectly fine now. So without further ado, let's go on with the setup and show you exactly what the new dashboard looks like. So right now I'm just running the main uh, Dart file, which will actually run the program. And the first thing you're gonna see is the splash screen. So there it is, that's splash screen, that's what you're gonna see. And there you go, that's a dashboard. And I just wanna go through the various parts where right? you have your uh, line charts here, your sidebar here, and your app bar. And all those things I just said are brand new, right? This is completely new. And I wanna start from the app bar. So as you may notice, if I make this window full screen, well, it adjusts to, you know, it adjusts all these widgets, right, in Flutter to the size of your screen. In the app bar, you have um, you know some little features. So the first one is like a little little clock. You might you know it comes in handy to, to know what time it is. The second one is the number of satellites your GPS is actually connected to. So you can just parse that data through the data packet, and it'll just display it right here. Here you have the status of your rocket. So if it connects or disconnects from the COM port, uh, it will show right here. But this is just connected to the ground station. So it'll usually say connected after you connect through the serial uh, communication. Over here, you have the signal strength, which can also be parsed through the data packets very easily. Your battery in percent. Now this is the battery percentage of uh, what's located inside of your model rocket. So it'll just be showing right here. Then in the main, dashboard. So this is what we call like the home screen. Um, and that's actually what it's called in my uh, project. So you have several things going on here. You have what one, two, three, four, six and seven panels. So the first four is like your peripheral um, altitude, velocity, temperature, pressure, gyroscopes, accelerometers. So altitude self-explanatory it'll just show the altitude uh, graphed out velocity same thing temperature same thing and all these are actually the same data being parsed from the data packet 
right? Because that's what the software does. It takes your incoming data packets, either sent directly to the serial uh, communication or sent from uh, wireless communication, and it'll just decipher it based on the variable located before the numerical value, and it'll assign that to, let's say, velocity, altitude, uh, temperature. And it'll be graphed here, and I'll showcase what that looks like soon. Here you have your system status, and I think it's a very, you know, little neat feature to have a visual representation of just, you know, a rocket, and, you know, you have your motor, uh, power, microcontroller, or computer, and your continuity. So, same thing here. It shows the thrust in newtons, shows the status of the motor, status of the power, as well as the power itself, your computer. So, if the computer status is good, offline, show it here. Continuity, right? If you're going to use um, a chemical-based ejection, so if it's like gunpowder ejection or black powder, it'll show the continuity behind, uh, between the wires that are actually going to ignite it. And so, again, I'll show all this afterwards. So, then it's the port screen. Right, so this is the sidebar. This is where you can actually access the different pages uh, where everything is located. And in the port screen, it's quite reminiscent to the, let's say, Arduino serial communication screen. And it's very, very easy to understand. So here you have your COM, here you have your serial uh, baud rate. And for communication, this is just uh, the available uh, COM ports that it detects. And here it's the serial baud rate, which is assigned to that um, program. You press open and it shows whatever you see here. It still has the classic auto scroll features as well as actually sending uh, data to the serial monitor. Um, if you don't see the COM uh, port in uh, this list here, just press this refresh button and it definitely will pop up over here. In your peripheral, so peripheral, just like the dashboard, notice how it doesn't change, it's just the top part of um, the dashboard. So it's just your altitude, velocity, temperature, pressure. Obviously, with updates, I'll be adding more things down here. In your gyroscopes, it's just three gyroscopes, so X, Y, Z. Accelerometer, same thing, it's X, Y, Z. And here comes the pretty cool part, is the debug screen. Now, in the debug screen, you can actually send uh, commands from the cosmic tower to the flight computer, or the model rocket. And to get access to these values, right now it's deactivated, you just press debug. And the moment you press debug, it sends a command to the model rocket. It'll retrieve all these values that it's stored in its EEPROM it will show it here and then you can actually edit those values. So if the first part is the PID constants, this is in reference to um, the PID controller where the P is for proportionality, the I is for integral and D is for derivative. And those are used, uh, at least in my case, for the thrust vector control. That's what um, I'll be using these constants for. So you can actually, let's say make the integral zero uh, derivative, you know, you can bring it up to 0.54 and proportional, you know, whatever, whatever you set your settings at. Battery is the, just the voltage of the battery uh, at hundred percent. Why am I putting this here? This is just because so that you can see the percentage of the battery accurately on uh, the app bar up here in your ejection delay. Well, that's obvious because you want your parachute to deploy either at apogee or after apogee you can also have it uh tune your current local uh pressure so that you can calibrate your pressure sensors then you have your servo settings oh i just realized there's a little typo here it's probably because i was copy pasting these columns uh your servo settings your start angle and your end angle so if you're choosing to do a mechanical based deployment well you can just choose your start angle of your servo maybe at 90 degrees and to maybe you let go of a spring-loaded system you set it to zero so it goes from 90 to zero um, 
so yeah, that's it. So when you're done, and also shows information based on all these uh, little little things here. When you're done, you just press this little send icon right here, and you just press send, and it sends the serial communication uh, ports, deciphers it, and saves it on the EEPROM on the model rocket, and you should be good. So location, it's quite anticlimactic, but the location will just show the location of the model rocket if you have a GPS system. If you don't have a GPS system, this will probably just show as zero or no data available. For now, I, you know, I really wanted to have a little map feature where it shows your location and the model rocket's location. But for now, it's just the longitude and latitude. You know, that's okay for now. I really do want to make this a uh, nicer, more convenient, you can say. Uh, settings, this is not functional, by the way. And plus, I'm not even sure if I should add a settings bar because there is really nothing to set. Uh, other than maybe like a dark mode, light mode thing. You can let me know in the comments what you think I should add like as a settings features. But for now, uh, these are kind of like dead. Info page is what I'll be, um, it's just the update, right? The update list, the added features per update, uh, bug fixes per update. That's what's gonna be shown here. Um, and if you have any questions, the emails over here. And don't forget, if you have any ideas of what I should add, or you think you would like for this, just let me know in the comments or email me uh, through the email. I'll probably put it in the description somewhere. Um, so yeah, that's for the sidebar. It's collapsible. So the sidebar is completely collapsible. You can still press the icons and move around. You can see the nice little animations, right? And again, it's adaptable to your screen. So you can make this smaller, bigger. The number of little line charts also adapt. So if I make this smaller, there you go. It goes from a little two by two. You can still scroll, by the way, through the different widgets and open it up like that. So now I'll actually go into the showcase of the dashboard. So I've just rebooted the application here. And, you know, just as before, you have your dashboard. And I've also built this little model little flight computer here. Um, all it has is just a little IMU, a uh, little, little pressure sensor. Um, this transceiver uh, is probably for a future video. I don't want to really get into it right now because this video is probably going to get long enough. But I might do a little range test and tell you how this actually works. I've connected to this little STM32F411 uh, chip or microcontroller, also known as the black pill. And what I want to do is I just wrote a Arduino sketch that grabs the raw data and will parse it through a little data packet and send it to the serial monitor on the screen. So what I'll do is just go on the uh, ports page or port screen. This is COM4. And I'll just press the baud rate and press open. And there you go. It starts parsing the data. Great. So if I go back onto the dashboard, you see that the data is being parsed, like perfectly. Just as before, right? Just like the other video, it's being parsed. So you have your gyroscope, your accelerometers, uh, velocity, temperature, pressure. Velocity, by the way, is just a constant. I'm not actually calculating velocity. I just set it equal to five. Same for satellite, signal, and battery. It's definitely not 500%, but you get the point. It will just parse the data and output it on those parts. Uh, so another cool feature is you can actually go over the graph and see in you know points for that location. So for example, uh, here let's say temperature is 23.9 degrees Celsius. And you can do this with any one of them. You still have just like before the data below the graph, right? They're all here. Same for your accelerometer, gyroscopes. Uh, this data is also the same for over here, right? X, Y, Z, your peripheral altitude, velocity, temperature, pressure, your gyroscopes. Um, and let's say for the, uh, I don't know, temperature. I will, I will just put my finger on the sensor. I just moved it, there you go. It's gonna rise, right? Naturally, that's what you would expect. 
Uh, the temperature, by the way, in this case, is actually taking the average of both the pressure sensor and uh, the MPU. If I move the computer, well, you will see that it's also moving, right? Um, I feel like I inversed it in the sketch where I put the gyroscope data for the accelerometer and vice versa, but you get the point. They're just graphing data just like before. Uh, all these values are gonna, are more on the Arduino side. So uh, some problems I do need to fix that maybe you've noticed is the jittery lines. I do have to fix those jittery lines. I don't want to release the software with those things. Oh, maybe you noticed, look at that, it has adaptive control. So it will adapt to the size of the input that's coming on the line chart. And you still have your serial monitor. The auto scroll feature, well, it'll turn off if you turn it off and it'll turn on if you turn it on. You can still scroll through the data, just like that. And, you know, turn back auto scroll, clear the output, do whatever you want. Uh, very easy to use. I'm kind of happy with what I was able to do in just a couple of months, but it works. It does work. So maybe next time I'll show uh, maybe a range test with the transceivers and how the transceivers work and the code behind it. Uh, I think that'll make for a good video. But that's it for this. Maybe you hear the, the bird outside. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, Tell me what you think in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time. Take care.